Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Test Automation Engineer Certification where we are in chapter 4 talking about implementing the test automation and as a part of this particular tutorial we are stepping into the 4.2 where we are talking about the risk associated with test automation development and would be understanding more about what are these varieties of risk which we should be considerate about and look forward to plan for mitigation. As a part of this particular tutorial, we are talking about the possible risks which are related to that of the automation implementation. But certainly the journey starts right from the planning phase itself. Of course, we must consider the risk related to the implementation of the architecture and the task solution. But right from the beginning, when we start planning, we can certainly consider a lot of factor which might be influencing the possible risk areas related to design of the architecture. Of course, talking about implementation of uh, the tasks and then talking about the deployment as well. As a part of this particular segment, we'll be deep diving it and trying to understand what could be those possible risk areas and special considerations to be taken into account when it comes to this particular process. To start with the very first thing we are talking about is the interfacing of the TAF to the SUT needs to be considered as a part of architectural design. Then the packaging, test logging, and the test hardness tools can be selected. During the implementation of the pilot, expansion and maintenance of the test automation code needs to be considered. There are crucial factors of the pilot evaluation phase and can seriously affect the final destination or final decision. So of course, uh, when it comes to the automation architecture, we understand that the TAF plays a vital role in interacting with the SUT, where the TAF is basically a part of having the definition layer, the execution layer, and the adaptation layer of our entire architecture. And they play a very vital role in interacting with the SUT. If in case the components are not playing their role or not being responsible for their activities and contributions, the, in, the significance of connecting and performing that activity or providing a solution to the entire SUT would, me, would may not be possible and may have problems related to that. So point being made is this all should be considered right from the architecture phase itself that is while designing that what could be the challenges of having this tool chain putting up together to a test automation framework and right there we should look forward to start planning for any such risk which might be relevant to that. Also when it comes to the pilot project which is one of the key activities which we describe as a phase where we look forward to review in fact evaluate our task for the first time. Because of course this uh, task when it is implemented will be first given to one particular project and then we will be looking forward to deep dive and understand this particular task in more depth by being used in the real world by one of the project. So pilot projects should be evaluated for any such risk again or should be uh, looking forward to those matrices which may contribute to the success factors or deciding the final decision whether this task is relevant for this purpose or not. Because if in case anything is identified, at that same point, we should look forward to rectify them before it is rolled out to the rest of the organization. Further to add here, different deployment risk can be identified from the pilot, including firewall openings and resource utilization, which includes CPU and RAM. Now, preparation must be made for the deployment risks such as firewall issues, resource utilization, network connection, and reliability. These are not strictly connected to the test automation, but test automation engineers need to ensure that all conditions are met uh, to provide the reliable and beneficial quality gates in their development process. Indeed, some of the commonly known risks are related to the firewall, and uh, we do talk about that these firewall openings should be available or open to the task, because when uh, generally we understand as an automation engineer ourselves, that when we try to interact to a system via an automated triggered test execution, it might be possible that the firewall may stop it, considering that there is a threat to the system. But we have to educate this particular framework that we are trying to do it with supervision of the test automation engineer. And that is where it becomes pretty important for us to understand how exactly the firewall uh, gates will be open for us and how exactly the automation solution will penetrate through this firewall to reach the SUT to perform the activity. At the same time, we also discuss on the resource utilization because as we are talking about multiple solutions, multiple components contributing to the entire framework, 
there might be possible that the resource utilization may go high. And just because of having this heavy solution, which is collection of multiple components, can result into poor performance of the entire solution itself. Or just because sometimes these activities do create a SUT to response slow, because there will be multiple communications which might be happening via this solution. So it is very important for us to understand how exactly the network connections are there, what are the firewall status, and what kind of resource being utilized. Also to add here, using real devices for the mobile test automation, it provides an example. Mobile devices must be powered on, have enough battery power to work during the test, be connected to a network, and have access to the SUT. Now, SUT here is being referred to as a mobile application, which is hosted on a mobile device. So all we are trying to relate it, that it's not necessary that you are accessing an SUT just like a simple and ordinary application, which we pretty much use as a desktop application or web-based application. Sometimes these applications may be hosted on an external device or some equipments, and those equipments may have multiple other protocols to be taken into account. For example, having sufficient power in example of mobile device, mobile device, and at the same time, being connected to the network, which might be required for making a call, sending an SMS, or maybe utilizing a data source. Further to add here, the next thing we are talking about is the examples related to the technical deployment risk. And here we include four of them. Number one is packaging, second is logging, and third is true structuring, and fourth is updating. To start with, the very first we have is packaging, and packaging needs to be considered as version control of the test automation, and is just as important as for the test SUT. The testware may need to be uploaded into a repository to share across an organization, either on the premises or in the cloud. Packaging is more of like this entire test automation solution when deployed should not be shared as an independent component to the team. It must be binded up together as a single binding, like a library or like a JAR file, and then should be given to the uh, team who is going to work or execute this. Considering that test automation engineers here are a different team than that of the testing team where you are providing the solution. So test automation team, when they implement this or when they are ready for this, in order to deploy it to the project or to the project members, they make sure that this is binded together in a particular platform and shipped to their environment to perform or use them. At the same time, it can be done locally or it can be done via the cloud sources by creating a virtual machine and setting up all the configurations there and let the team utilize that source like virtual source of cloud to perform their required activity. So packaging can be one of the biggest risk which is related to putting them all together intact because on in terms of uh, shifting them, it might be possible that the connections may be lost or some of the components of the TAF or the entire test automation solution may not be able to work. The second important thing we are talking about is the next part that is logging. And in logging, uh, certainly test logging gives most of the information about the test results. There are several test logging levels and all of them are useful in test automation for various reasons. For example, there might be various possible ways by which the logging can be done. It can be fatal, error, warn, info, debug, and trace. Fatal, certainly this level is used to log errors, events that may lead to abort the test execution. And certainly the word fatal certainly means that it is not something which is up to the mark or probably we cannot proceed ahead. There is a fatal error which has occurred and we pretty much use it in our day-to-day -day life or day-to-day -day world of our test automation. The second error or second option is error itself. This level is generally uh, used when a condition or interaction fails and therefore fails the test case as well. Now, it's just that uh, it is slightly lesser importance than that of fatal. And fatal is more of like a critical issue, whereas error is more of like runtime issue, but it's just failing that particular test case, but not the entire situation or entire scenario. Whereas fatal will be more of critical, that means the entire scenario failed just because of that particular failure. So I can relate this to critical major defects. So critical is more importance and fatal is of less, less severity compared to that of critical. Whereas the next one we have is the warning. And of course we say warn is the level which is used when an unexpected condition or action occurs, but does not break the flow of the test case. So definitions are pretty straightforward. We should make a lot of sense and help you relate them to that. So warning is always about more of like notification on any particular step which is done wrong, 
but does not break the executions of the test case. The next one we have is info, which is of course for notifications, but without any kind of issue. This level is used to show the basic information about a test case and what happens during the test execution. Whereas debug is the uh, option where this level is used to store execution specific details that generally are not required for the basic logs, but useful during investigation of a test failure. And finally, the trace. This level is certainly similar to debug, but has even more information than that of debug. As the name suggests, debug is more useful when we are trying to debugging or trying to investigate the reason of the failure. So sometimes you may get an error code, which would represent a particular numeric value. And based on that numeric value, you would like to deep dive and try to identify that particular step where exactly the failure happened and then correlate that to the SUT or the TAS to figure out that what could be the real reason for the failure. Because a failure in automation is very tricky to conclude. The reason is there are so many components in the part of TAS itself and including SUT, we might find it very difficult to come to the conclusion that what is the relevant root cause. So it can be related to the test script, it can be related to the data, it can be related to things like keywords which we are using, or it can be related to the SUT itself. So it's very important for the team to have all the details related to each log so that they can conclude easily that what went wrong and where is the problem. Further to add, of course, there are two more things here. And the next thing we have is test is structuring and test structuring center certainly deals with the most important part of the task and is the test hardness and the test fixtures included in it. Items that must be available for the test to run. So structuring here simply refers to all the other components which we generally need to form the structure of the task, which includes things like the test hardness, the test fixtures, and items that must be available for tests to run, which includes things like libraries, connection to any kind of data source, databases, protocols, etc. Also, the test fixtures provide the freedom in controlling a test environment and the test data as well. Preconditions and the post conditions can also be defined for the test execution and the test cases can be grouped into test suites in several ways. So put together, that all together puts up to be a structure of the test. The second important point here to talk about is these aspects are also important to evaluate during a pilot project. Moreover, the test fixtures enable the creation of automated tests that are repeatable and atomic. That means independent, uh, talking about the positivity and also looking forward to perform the required activities as and when required. So put together the structure certainly is going to have all the components put together in a very systematic way, which leads to the execution. In fact, smooth execution of the entire test. And the final point here to talk about is, of course, updating. One of the most common technical risks are the automatic updates on the test harness, which are basically the agents and the version changes on devices. These risks can be mitigated by having adequate power supplies, proper network connection, and proper device configuration plans. Updating is certainly seen as one of the uh, common reasons why something would fail at a particular point of time. This can be easily observed by having first test being executed. And when I read on this test after a while, or maybe after a few days, it starts failing. And as this comparison happens, that previously it was passing and now it is failing, I totally understand there is either a change in the SUT, which can be done manually by the developers, or there is a change which happened due to any kind of other updates. So these updates must be tracked. It's easy to do. Generally, when the updates are rolled out, we always have a notification or we may have a release note, which can be understood for the impact of these changes or these updates. So it is very important for us to document these things so that it can help us to align them to any kind of other changes which are required to align to these updates which might be happening. So it is very important for the team to take care of things like uh, having adequate power supplies, proper network connections, and proper device configuration plan to mitigate such risk. As a part of this tutorial, we indeed discuss about several risks which are related to different activities and various components of the TAF. So we must be trying to figure out more. In fact, this is limited. There could be many more things which you will experience in the real world. So it's more important to conclude by saying that 
It is important for a test automation engineer to have collective knowledge of various risks which are related to their test automation solution and SUT and try to monitor them or find the possible mitigation steps before we deploy them. Otherwise, generally in deployment, they'll have these risks in actuality and might result into a complete failure of this entire scenario. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning. Thank <laughs> you.